Will in the future paralyzed people be able to communicate with their loved ones? That is the question that Paradromics, a competitor of the famous Neuralink, is trying to answer. Today we'll take a look at the brain-computer interface that this company is developing that can read large amounts of data from the brain, far more than what possible before. And we will learn about the innovative surgery that makes this technology possible. Finally, we'll talk about future plans and when the product will hit the markets. So stay until the end! Paradromics is a company that was created in 2015 by the researcher Matt Engel, and it was created, amongst other things, with the support of DARPA, that is the deepest advanced research project agency from the US military. In 2017, they launched a program aiming at sensory restoration, that is a program to tackle sensory deficits, like hearing and speech, and providing a way for people to communicate when not possible. In fact, the objective of Paradromics is to bring to the market the first high data rate brain computer interface that allows to read the brain and to grant people with disabilities a chance to communicate again. But in future, the company has a great vision and ambition to treat also mental disorders like depression and OCD. Compared to Neuralink or Kernel, we have to say that Paradromics has a heavy focus on therapies and less on commercial applications. If you're interested in Kernel, I made also a video about that, I put you the link in the description, but Kernel is a company that is developing this basically helmet for monitoring the brain performance, so there is more focus on commercial applications, and also Neuralink, we heard from Neuralink and from Elon Musk that one of the future applications will be to f do things like, for example, streaming music to the brain or doing lots of these very hyped things. But in any case, Paradromics wants to keep the applications, for the moment, therapeutical. And the product that they are developing is called Argo. And it is a recording system, but it's a recording system with the highest channels count of all the available systems for brain-computer interfacing. Channels, that is, the electrodes that are physically implanted in the brain. These electrodes, just to remind, they record the brain pulses, and they detect and they reconstruct the brain activity by sending information to an external computer. The product Argo has about 30,000 channels that have been demonstrated in trials, but the objective would be to increase this number to 65,000. And why is it important? Why do we want to have more channels and more electrodes? More channels means more data that can be exchanged with the brain, or more data that can be read from the brain, which means more information available on the brain activity of a person. Just to make a comparison, Neuralink has only around thousands of channels, like 3,000 channels, which is still more than what currently available with brain-computer interfaces, with the state-of-the-art brain-computer interfaces like the Utah Array, which is what you're seeing right now, which is only about a hundreds of electrodes. But still, it was able for years to yield great results. It is a very consolidated device, it is what we saw, for example, at the beginning of the video with this lady capable of moving a cursor with a screen just by controlling it with her thoughts. So the idea is to allow people with disabilities a chance to communicate via these brain-computer interfaces, and Paradromics would like to continue along the same principle, but develop it further by allowing more channels to interface with the brain. Now, when it comes to the physical layout of this device, these channels, they are arranged in arrays. Basically, every array is like this round thing, about 12 millimeters per 12 millimeters. These round arrays are placed on the cortex surface, and these wires, these small electrodes, they act like anchors, so they anchor on physically on the brain cortex, and you can have more of these arrays. In fact, the design that Paradromics is working on is highly scalable, that is, you can have multiple of these arrays, you can have multiple electrodes recording also different parts of the brain. The microwires, the electrodes that are used for recording, they're made in a conductive metal wire core, mostly platinum, iridium, and of course this metal, this conductive material is used to detect the electrical pulses that are generated by the brain. But here is a very interesting thing. These wires are not flexible. And it's interesting because it's a different solution, it's a different direction with respect to what Neuralink is doing. Neuralink has stressed the importance of having flexible electrodes, flexible electrodes to be implanted in the brain to reduce the brain stress. The idea is that if you have a flexible electrode, then this flexible material is supposed to reduce the stress, the physical stress on the brain tissue. But according to Paradromics, well, rigid is better. That's what she said! <laughs> no, seriously. 
But according to Paradromics, while flexible wires are very promising, with the current technology it's very hard to make these wires reliable and last for long in the human brain, because the human brain environment is a very tough environment. You have a problem of the biocompatibility, it's a big issue when it comes to brain-computer interfaces. Because of course you want to place something in the human brain that can last for long, you don't want to uh, subject the person to too many surgeries to replace the interface too often. The target with Paradromics is to have a 10 years lifetime of the interface, so something that can last in the human brain for about 10 years. And then the whole system, this whole Argo system, is at the moment still not a brain implant per se. Now, let me specify by it. It has been developed just for trials for now. So Paradromics has developed this system that currently is sitting outside of the brain. It's large as a water bottle and it sits outside of the brain with the electrodes physically implanted in the brain. But of course, the future direction is to make it something that can be actually physically integrated within a human head. Now, moving on to the surgery and the second part, because there is something very interesting to be said about the surgery. We saw also with Neuralink that they really focused not only on the brain-computer interface per se, but also on the surgical robot that is supposed to implant physically the electrodes in the brain, which is, of course, a very complicated operation, you might imagine, of course. And Paradromics has built a surgical tool to facilitate the safe implantation of microelectrodes. In fact, inserting the electrode is a very huge challenge for brain implants. The thing is that when you insert physically the electrode, there is some what is called dimpling, some potential brain tissue deformation that happens, of course, when you're physically pushing this electrode in the brain. What happens with, for example, the UTA ray, the, the state of the art of brain computer interfaces, is that they solve this problem of dimpling, of deformation, by inserting the electrode at a high velocity. And this high velocity penetration it reduces the problem of dimpling, but of course it can still cause bleeding. So Paradromics has devised this solution that uses a laser. It uses uses basically laser ablation similar to what happens in LASIK, you know, the corrective eye surgery that is done with a laser where corneal tissue from the cornea is ablated with a pulsed laser. But in this case the target of this laser is not the cornea, it is in fact the pia mater. The pia mater is a membrane that is surrounding the brain, it's not part of the brain per se, it's just a membrane, and the idea is that if you ablate a part of this pia mater, then the force that is required, that is required to insert physically the electrodes is smaller. So of course you have less stress, less physical stress on the brain. Now this is all very interesting, we saw the product Argo, we saw the surgery, but what about the future? What holds the future for this company? Because so far they have tested the product on rats and on sheep. Like with Neuralink, they started with animals. Neuralink started with pigs and rats. And in sheep trials, they implanted the electrodes in the auditory cortex of the sheep, and these implants were registered when sheep were hearing noises, and it worked. So, very good on that, but of course, can we do it better? Can Paradromics develop something that is commercially viable? Currently, Paradromics is working on finishing the hermetic chip packaging. That is, the packaging in metal ceramic that surrounds the, the electrons of the brain computer interface because of course again we said biocompatibility is a big issue and you want to avoid contamination of electronics of the electronics that you're putting inside of a human head contamination by the brain fluids so we're moving towards something that is more commercially viable because just to repeat the system so far was sitting outside the brain which is not viable of course you cannot walk around with this thing attached to your head currently paradromic is developing a miniaturized version with about 400 channels so yeah it's less channels than what proposed but still very promising application very interesting and it will be used on quadriplegics to allow communication first feasibility study according to the ceo might have happen in around 2023 or 2024, and commercial availability might take a few more years. We wish all the best to this company and we really hope to see this amazing technology help many people in the future. Now let me know in the comments what you think about this technology and this solution compared to other companies regarding brain-computer interfaces. If you're interested in the topic of brain-computer interfaces, consider subscribing to my channel. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.